I had previously covered Alice in Chains' EP Sap, and I've linked to the video down below. But today I want to explore the band's best known EP, Jar of Flies, in addition to the turmoil that happened after they released the record. Stay tuned for the full story. Alice in Chains spent the better part of 1993 on the road promoting their sophomore LP, Dirt. While the album was a huge success, selling over 6 million copies worldwide, it was also a tumultuous time for the group as original bassist Mike Starr was fired from the band in early 1993, and frontman Lane Staley's drug dependency grew worse. During the summer of 1993, the band was part of the traveling tour known as Lollapalooza, and it was during that tour guitarist Jerry Cantrell called up producer Toby Wright to ask him to help the band record some new music. Wright asked if the band had written any music, and the guitarist claimed they had in fact written music, when in reality, they hadn't written anything new. Cantrell wouldn't admit this to Wright until they met in person in the studio in September of 1993. The band would assemble at London Bridge Studios, and the plan was to spend a week together and jam, and see what the group came up with. According to the album's liner notes, the whole EP was written, recorded, and mixed over the course of just five days, from September 17th to the 22nd, with the band and the production team working 14 to 18 hour days. According to producer Toby Wright, the band was efficient in recording their parts, with him revealing to author David DeSola in the book Alice in Chains The Untold Story how most songs were recorded in one or two takes. One of the singles and standout tracks from the album was the song I Stay Away. The band would bring in a four piece orchestra to add strings to the track, and typically when an orchestra is brought in, they're given sheet music to play. But David Hill, who worked at London Bridge Studios but didn't work on the album, remembers seeing guitarist Jerry Cantrell show the orchestra what he wanted played, recalling to DeSola, What I've learned from other sessions is that you have a conductor and everything is written out musically speaking on paper. I remember Jerry being fearless and going in there with a guitar in the main room where the orchestra was sitting and showing them the parts on his guitar and what he was hearing and what he wanted which is not something you normally do because orchestra musicians usually don't work that way. I Stay Away was an important song for two other reasons. According to guitarist Jerry Cantrell, he would reveal it was the first song the band would write with new bassist Mike Inez, saying in the band's 1999 Music Bank box set collection, that was the first time we'd written with Mike Inez, which makes this another special song. The whole Jar of Flies EP proved to both of us and the fans what a talented and valid part of the band Mike was. He plays the nastiest, darkest shit, but he's got the sweetest heart in the world, he'd say. While the band would release two music videos for the EP, one for No Excuses and one for I Stay Away, I Stay Away's video was particularly notable because it was entirely shot using stop motion animation and it included the band members in puppet form. In fact, those puppets you see in the video are at display at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum in Cleveland, Ohio. According to Lane's mother, Nancy, it was around this time in Staley's life that he really got into claymation, and it was likely his idea to make the video. When it came time to record the song Don't Follow, the band brought in an older guy to record the harmonica parts, but he kept grunting, so the band didn't use his part and instead got a friend of Chris Cornell's to fill in. While not released as a single, the track Nutshell soon became one of Alice in Chains' best known and favorite songs among fans. Bassist Mike Inez would tell Revolver Magazine that the track is the first song that comes to his mind when he thinks of Lane, revealing, I think the number one for me is Nutshell. Lane was very honest with his songwriting and in Nutshell, he really put everything in a nutshell for everybody. That song still gets me choked up whenever I play it. I get a little teary eyed. And sometimes when we're doing the arena runs especially, they'll have some video footage of Lane, and I look and see me and Jerry and Sean looking the wrong way. We're not looking at the audience, we're looking back at Lane, and it's pretty cool that there's still that song for us. Yeah, it's just a sad song, you'd say. The idea for the album name came from a science experiment Cantrell did as a kid. The cover of the album was shot by Rocky Schneck, who had previously worked with Alice in Chains, and he would shoot the cover in his dining room. The band had come up with an idea for the title and wanted the cover to be a young boy looking into a jar filled with flies. I remember they asked me to use crazy colors in the shots, so I utilized lots of different color gels over the lights to achieve the final look. Schneck's assistant would make several trips to a nearby stable up the road to trap flies using a butterfly net. On the EP's 25th anniversary, Schneck posted some outtakes not previously seen from the Jar of Flies cover shoot, as you can see here. 
he would reveal on Instagram that he still in fact has the jars that were used on the photo shoot. The EP would be released on January 14th, 1994, and it would make music history, becoming the first EP to reach number one on the Billboard charts. Alice in Chains had big plans in 1994 following the album's release. They started off January of 94 performing at the Hollywood Palladium in Los Angeles for a benefit show. The band showcased some of their new songs from their latest EP, which was scheduled to come out in a few weeks. The set though was a somber affair, and the LA Times wrote a disappointing review of the performance, saying, Seattle's Alice in Chains was the most somber and serious of the bunch, with its acoustic set bringing the mood and pace down between the other band's electric momentum. With a fedora sporting bongo beating Staley leading the unplugged quartet, two new songs and two older numbers sounded intriguingly like the Gregorian interpretations of 2000 Light Years Away From Home, but that was all the band played, leaving the crowd booing the stinginess it would read. Following the success of Jar of Flies, which went triple platinum, the band planned a huge summer tour opening for Metallica, and even an appearance at Woodstock 94, which celebrated the 25th anniversary of the festival. Instead, the previous year's Dirt Tour would represent the last major tour the band would embark on with singer Lane Staley. His drug addiction had become all-consuming, and in the run-up to the band's planned summer tour, Staley made an appearance at the KISW Rockstock concert at Kitsap County Fairgrounds in late May of 1994, in which he appeared on stage with Tool to perform the song Opiate. According to the Seattle Post-Intelligencer, Lane looked sickly and wore ski masks to hide his face. According to Rolling Stone magazine at the band's first rehearsal for the Metallica tour, Lane returned from a stint to rehab and showed up to practice high, while at the same time drummer Sean Kinney was struggling with alcohol. It was at that practice that Kinney and Cantrell vowed never to play with Lane again. Mike Einiz would tell author Mark Yarm in the book Everybody Loves Our Town, we had a meeting and it was really, really apparent that we shouldn't go on tour with Metallica. A poignant moment for me was after that meeting. It was raining outside and I was walking down the alleyway one way and Lane was walking the other way. I turned around and looked at Lane and that's when I had a really big flash like, wow, we're not healthy here. The band's manager, Susan Silver, would release a statement that the band was withdrawing from the Metallica tour and their Woodstock appearance due to health issues with the band. The statement would also claim that Alice in Chains would head back into the studio in the fall of 94. Candlebox would end up picking up Alice in Chains' touring slots, and I've done a whole video on that, the link is down below. The band would break up for about six months, and Lane would try to kick his addiction and take up other musical projects, including Mad Season, with Pearl Jam's Mike McCready and Screaming Tree's Barrett Martin. I've done a whole video on that as well, the link is down below in the description box. Lane was also spotted around town performing with the group Second Coming, creating some controversy in the Alice in Chains camp, as questions started coming up as to why the band had cancelled their tour. Sean Kinney would recall to Rolling Stone this difficult period in the band's history, saying, Nobody was being honest with each other back then. If we kept going, there was a good chance we would have self-destructed on the road. We didn't want that to happen in public, he'd say. The band would reassemble in early 95 to start work on what would be their final studio album with Lane Staley. I'll be talking more about that in a future video. That does it for today's topic, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll Your Story Sticker.